Hey, hey there, elites. It's me, your guy, Waddles. Welcome back to a fresh, fresh video. Redstone is a massive part of Minecraft. With redstone, about a million things can be done. Redstone is really, really cool. Today, redstone is the star of the show. In this video, we'll be checking out five simple must-have redstone contraptions. All of the contraptions that we'll be taking a look at in today's video are either easy or intermediate to build, but are all insanely useful. What's your must-have redstone contraption? Let me know in the comments below. Remember to drop a like and subscribe for more. The first contraption in today's video is a tileable sugarcane or bamboo farm. With these boys built in your world, eventually you'll be stacked, fully stacked in fact, with sugarcane or bamboo. You can then take that sugarcane and make a bunch of paper or take the bamboo and I guess plant it everywhere because it looks beautiful. Now these machines are insanely compact. As you can see right here, they don't take up much space at all. Now, the materials, what do you need to build these things? Well, in exact amounts to build one tile of either your bamboo farm or your sugarcane farm, you will need these materials in exact amounts. Now, you will also need to decide if you'll be making a bamboo farm or a sugarcane farm. You should also probably have some extra building blocks on hand, and if you're doing a sugarcane farm, a water bucket and maybe something to waterlog, like staircases. Now, building one of these things is about as easy as it looks. Start by placing a chest on the ground, and then going into that chest, place a hopper. On top of that hopper, place a rail, and then place a minecart with a hopper. After that, you can then get rid of that rail, or you can keep it. It doesn't really matter. Now, place a few temporary building blocks and build up above this minecart with the hopper in it, and then place a plantable block. So a plantable block is something like dirt, coarse dirt, and those blocks will work beautifully. After that, place a building block and then another building block, then remove that first building block. Finally, place a piston facing forwards, an observer looking in the same direction as that piston, and then right behind that piston, a block and a redstone dust. That's it. That is the whole machine right there. Well, pretty much. Now plant whatever you're trying to grow on the plantable block and then build building blocks all the way around this thing. If you skip the building blocks, your bamboo or your sugarcane will get thrown everywhere and that will be a big problem. Remember to cover the top as well. You should end up with something that looks kind of like this. Now, I did say this is tileable. That means you can put this thing right next to each other as many times as you'd like. You can put 64 of these things in a line and, well, you'd have a lot of bamboo or sugarcane. But that is contraption number one. These are absolutely a must have. With this Nux contraption built in your world, you can say goodbye to the disgusting, smelly zombie pigmen. With this thing built in your base, you will no longer find zombie pigmen inside of your base. This next one is another portal that can be turned on and off. So to turn this thing on, simply flick the on lever, and to turn it off, simply flick the off lever. Easy as that. You can disguise this thing however you'd like because the wiring is actually pretty compact. To build this toggleable nether portal, you will need these materials in exact amounts right here. Now, obsidian, you don't really need a stack, you just need enough obsidian to make a nether portal. So at the minimum, you'll need 10. Well, actually, that was kind of a lie. You'll need more than 10 obsidian for this nether portal because it needs to be a little bit bigger than the default minimum nether portal. Your nether portal for this build should be at least three blocks wide. Any more compact in will have to change the wiring up and it won't look as good. So start with a nether portal that looks something like that. I have three wide, four tall, but the height doesn't matter at all. After that, place a temporary block, temporary block, just like that, and then a dispenser. Then do the exact same thing on the other side. You should have a one block gap in between your dispensers at least, because if you don't, well, uh, great, this guy. <laughs> I will see you around, wandering trader, goodbye. If you don't leave the gap in between your dispensers, then your on switch will actually activate both dispensers and your off switch will do the exact same thing. That is a big problem. So after placing your dispensers and definitely not skipping the corners, it's time to build two separate circuits. The first circuit that we'll build will turn this nether portal on. The on circuit is very easy to build. Start with a block placed right next to your nether portal and place a lever on that block. This lever will control the circuit. Behind that block with the lever on it, place three building blocks and then three redstone dust linking the lever right up to the dispenser. Inside of that dispenser, place a flint and steel. Again, hit the lever and it turns on. Now the off switch. The off switch is a little bit more tricky, but also not really at all. Start in the exact same way with a block and a lever. Then place three more blocks right behind that lever, going over towards the dispenser. Now this is where things switch up a little bit. Place two redstone dust this time, and then an observer just like that. 
Now, technically, you could skip the Observer here and go for another Redstone Dust, but if you decide to do that, your water might end up spilling out all over your base, which is kind of a problem. So now we have this to turn the portal off and this to turn the portal on. That is perfect. Now, when using this thing, particularly the off switch, make sure you hit it twice, just like that, so the water is dispensed and then picked back up immediately. If you don't, water will spill everywhere. Technically, you could replace these with buttons, but again, the water spills everywhere, buttons are a little bit slower. That is how you build another portal that turns on and off. Before we take a look at the next contraption, if you are enjoying the video, help your guy out by dropping a like and subscribing. I'd really appreciate it. Auto smelters are a beautiful, beautiful thing. With these things built in your world, really worrying about smelting or standing by a furnace, that stuff is officially cancelled. Now, an auto smelter is really, really easy to build. To build one of these things, you will need a furnace, three hoppers, and three chests. Now, you can use any furnace variant on this build, and you can use barrels in place of chests if you'd like. So grab those materials, then it's time to build your auto smelter. Start by placing a furnace somewhere. On top of that furnace, place a hopper going into it and then a chest on top of that hopper. On either the left or the right of the furnace, place a hopper going into it and then a chest again on top of that hopper. Finally, below the thing, a hopper and then a chest. Now, your input, or whatever you're trying to smelt, will go in your top chest. The fuel will go in the chest that is either on the left or the right of this thing. Your output will be put in the bottom chest. So, let's say we started smelting... I don't know, iron inside of this thing. Once this iron smelts up, the ingot will instantly be moved to this bottom chest. So that's an auto smelter, but that's not actually the contraption for this one. This over here is the actual third machine. This is an auto smelter with a campfire alert beacon. As soon as the smelter is done smelting, the campfire will turn off. That means it's time to come back to your smelter and grab whatever you were trying to cook up. In my case, I'm cooking up pork chop. So I could throw things in my auto smelter over there, then walk over here and start punching the tree. As soon as the smoke goes away, I know that it's time to come back. Now the smoke is gone, so it's time to go back over there. My smelting is done. Now, obviously, I could see that it turned off, but let's say you were somewhere where you couldn't see this thing turn off. Maybe you built this inside of a building. Then this would actually be pretty useful. Building this thing is actually pretty easy to do as well. You will need the materials in exact amounts inside of this chest right here. You'll also probably want to have some building blocks and maybe a hay bale to make your smoke signal go higher into the sky so you can see it from farther away. First things first, we need to build an auto smelter. We just talked about how to build one of those things, but start with a furnace, hopper below the furnace going into a chest, hopper next to the furnace uh, with a chest on top of it, and then hopper above the furnace again with a chest on top of it. Now we have that. Now we need to set up this campfire alert beacon. Start by placing a building block, a building block, and a building block just like that. Then place an observer staring at your furnace and coming out of that observer, place a repeater. Add a bunch of delay to that repeater. After that, place an observer staring at that repeater and then a dispenser right behind that observer. Finally, place another dispenser right there, facing towards the same block that the first dispenser is looking at. Now, place a button on this front dispenser and a flint and seal inside of that one. On the back one, place a water bucket. In front of these dispensers, place a campfire. Grab two building blocks and place them here and here, and then a hay bale right below this thing, and boom, you're good to go. Now to use this thing, place whatever you're trying to smelt in the top, and then your fuel over on the left hand chest. Then, your campfire will be extinguished. Before walking away, make sure you press this button so your campfire is relit. And then, you can go and do whatever you'd like to do. Once your smelting is done, the campfire will be put out, and that means it's time to come back and grab whatever you were smelting. This is a great furnace setup to have if you're trying to get more than one thing done at once. Sometimes you may find yourself with a bunch of trash in your world and no way to get rid of it. If that is ever the case, this is the contraption for you. This right here is a super simple trash can build. This thing will get rid of your items efficiently. It's a little bit noisy though. To build this trash can contraption, you will need these materials in exact amounts right here. You will also want to have some building blocks. To build the trash can, start by placing a trap chest. Below and behind that trap chest, you'll need to place a dropper. Below that trap chest, going into the dropper, place a hopper. You should have something that looks just like this. Now we need to make this dropper fire as soon as it has something inside of it. To do that, we'll need an automatic dropper circuit. To build this automatic dropper circuit, go one block away and one block below the dropper and place a sticky piston. On top of that sticky piston, looking towards the dropper, place an observer. Then, place a random block and another observer looking towards this observer but one block above it. Finally, place a comparator going towards the lower observer. Now put something inside of your dropper and watch it be dropped. 
Now to make the trash can actually work, we'll need something to get rid of our items. For us, we'll be using a cactus. So place a sand block one block away from your dropper and then a cactus on top of it. Finally, place some building blocks right around this thing so your items are actually shot into the cactus. Now place your trash inside of the trap chest, close the trap chest, and this machine will begin throwing things away. If you make an accident, well, it's okay. If you're quick, you can pull it out of your trap chest or maybe even the hopper right below it. Again, this thing is a little noisy, but that's a small price to pay if you have lots of diorite in your world. I would like to send a big shout out to our guy is Zoom Avoid for the automatic dropper circuit. I'll leave a link in the description. And so here we are at the final contraption. Now, remember the first contraption that I showed you, the bamboo farm? That is actually used in this one, but it's not the thing that I'm showing off. The thing that I'm showing off is actually below this farm. Over here, behind these blocks, is a circuit that will stop this minecart and unload it before letting it return on its path. This circuit is very, very useful for any farm that utilizes a hopper minecart for collecting drops. Now to build this minecart unloader, you will need these supplies right here. These are just building blocks. You don't need smooth quartz, I just like to lay my redstone on smooth quartz. You'll also probably want to have a hopper minecart and some sort of farm that this hopper minecart is collecting drops from. Now to start, let's pretend this rail line is running underneath some sort of farm. Maybe a wool farm, maybe a bamboo farm, maybe a sugarcane farm, I have no clue honestly. So, this is where we want our minecart to drop off its items. Start by placing a hopper going into a chest. Now on top of that hopper, place a powered rail. Now we need a comparator actually coming right out of that hopper to detect the items inside of the hopper. That comparator needs to go into a block with a redstone torch on it. Right above that redstone torch, place the block and then place the repeater going towards the powered rail. Finally, to complete the circuit, place another block right there just like that. Your powered rail should then be activated. Now when there are items inside of your hopper, this whole circuit will be deactivated and the powered rail will be turned off. As soon as the items leave the hopper, however, the circuit will return to its on state. So if we had a hopper minecart with, say, a couple items inside of it, as soon as it hits the circuit, it will unload and then continue on its path. This circuit is amazing for large-scale farms with a lot of drops. And this is actually one of the circuits that I'm using in my single-player world to collect all of the drops from my wool farm. It is really, really useful. And so that just about does it for today's video. Those are five redstone contraptions that you need to build in your world. If you enjoyed this one, help me out by dropping a like and subscribing. All of my links are always in the description and the merch is always below the video. It's super fresh, super cozy. You should check it out and pick some up if you like it. Thank you all so much for watching and until next time, stay cool elites. I will see you next time. <laughs> Goodbye.